Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor and YouTube, where the watchers are the stars. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and in this video I do present you the newest uh, James Bond uh, Omega watch that was released uh, last year in November. And this is a Seamaster Diver 300 meters, coaxial master chronometer 42 millimeter, and it is called James Bond 60th anniversary watch. But in this video, we will not focus only on this newest Bond watch, but we will also show you all the other Bond watches that have been released since 1995 when Omega started to be the company to provide the watch to Mr. James Bond alias 007 Special Agent and you will see all the watches since 1995 and of course then you will also have the chance to quickly listen to Mr. Daniel Craig what he thinks about the latest developments in watches and what he always experienced with Omega during his career as a special agent of course, only on the screen, of course, we have to say that. But still, it is so cool to see what Omega did with all the watches, what Bond did with the watches in the movies. So, it will be a pretty cool video. Stay tuned and enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. This is the Seamaster Diver 300 meter James Bond 60th Anniversary Edition. It is a Seamaster Diver, so most of you will know that this is a watch with a diameter of 42 millimeter. The thickness of the watch is, yeah, yeah, you also know that probably it is quite thick. That's how it is. It is 14.3 millimeter, but it's nothing new. So it is also nothing you should complain about because it is known the fact that this watch is not the thinnest. The so-called log to log distance, I always measure it from one end of the logs to the other end of the logs, is 49 millimeter and the distance in between the logs that's what you see right now on your screen so the distance from here to here is 20 millimeters and if you're asking yourself does this stainless steel bracelet tap it doesn't look like yes it doesn't look like but a little bit it does and i will show you so we measure 20 in between the logs and we do measure 18 millimeters so it taps down from 20 to 18 that's not much but at least something so those of you who always complain that this bracelet is not tapering it is a little bit we do also have the legendary helium escape wolf um Part of the DNA, part of the design of this watch, all the discussions, is it necessary or not make sense to have one who needs one? Yeah, we can, we can talk about it, but end of the day, it is part of the DNA. It's just as other brands have their typical DNA. Just think about the Cyclops on the brand with the crown. You either like them or not the magnifying glasses to magnify the date. Some don't, some do. So it is how it is. Blue is the color scheme of this Bond edition. We showed you the watch that is linked to the latest Bond movie called No Time to Die that was released a little bit later than our video because we had the uh, pandemic and the cinemas couldn't show the newest Bond so we had to wait but our video was released in 2020 and it is yes a very similar look as you probably see now on your screen a very similar look color scheme now is blue 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 and the color scheme of the watch was more brown green green brown so more a military look and this is more yeah the typical look of the bond watches since 1995 blue is the dominant color since ever here so back 
to normal, I would say, with blue. The inlay is not ceramic, but it is an aluminum inlay. Scratch resistant aluminum, I have to say, so no worries, you will in normal conditions not be able to scratch this aluminum. It is a diver, the watch is waterproof up to 300 meters or 1000 feet, so you can use the watch for diving if you want. The basal turns only counterclockwise, you can hear it, it is 122 clicks. Nicely, sounds good, wait, you can hear it, <laughs> sounds even gorgeous, I have to say, very nice. There is no typical arrow um, indicating 0 or 60, but instead you do prominently see 60, and 60 must be positioned, uh, yes, here, then it is correctly positioned, normally you would have a little triangle here, not with this edition. Before I turn the watch around and I really show you the incredible cool thing of this watch, I just want to finish my little presentation from the front side by also telling you that there is a lot of Super Luminova being applied and look how beautiful, how beautiful this watch looks in dark conditions. Wow! So now I have turned this Seamaster around and what you see is a beautiful case back. Behind um, the scenery you probably discover right now on your screen you do see the Omega Calibre 8806. That's a self-winding movement, coaxial escapement, you all know that. It is meta-certified, resistant to magnetic fields, up to 15,000 Gauss, has a free-sprung balance with a silicon balance spring, and a power reserve, that's also important for you to know, 55 hours. But, ha ha ha, now comes the cool thing. Look here. Do you remember or do you know how the Bond movies always start? This is what this little turning wheel here that is connected to the central second hand of the watch is reproducing. It is a little, little animation and you can see Mr. Bond, here he is, coming, he is shooting and disappearing. And I love it. You can't get enough watching this scenery. Here he comes again, he positions himself, shoots and disappears. And I love it. It's again um, Omega being so creative, so different to any other brands I know, really celebrating the fact that they are partners of James Bond since 1995 and they, are the provi they provide the watches for the movies and all the actors that have been playing Bond so far since 1995 have been wearing an Omega and all had their fun, they had fun with these watches. Why did they have fun? Let us quickly show you the watches from 1995 up to today, up to the latest watch that has been released in November last year. It's the one you see on the screen and once again, please watch, you see? Mr. Bond coming in, now he turns around, he takes his gun and BAM! Shoots! GoldenEye 1995 and Omega Seamaster 300 meter quartz. Bond uses a laser installed in his Seamaster to cut an escape hatch in the floor of Alex Trevelyan's train. Later in Cuba, Trevelyan confiscates the watch and uses its helium release valve to disarm two limpet mines that 007 has planted. 1997 Tomorrow Never Dies Omega Seamaster 300 meter chronometer. Bond wears a version of the Seamaster 300 meter that has been modified in Agent Weylin's bicycle shop using the watch to extract the helium release valve when on board of Elliot's covers a stealth ship. 
The Wolf forms part of a remote detonator which 007 combines with a glass jar and a grenade to blast a hole in the ship. 1999, the world is not enough. Amiga Seamaster 300 meter chronometer. When Bond and Electra King are buried in an avalanche, 007 activates the LEDs on his Seamaster watch face by pressing the screw down crown, illuminating the inside of his ski jacket. Then in a nuclear bunker, Bond fires a miniature piton with a high tensile wire from the watch to elevate himself to a gantry. Die another day, 2002. Omega Seamaster 300 meter chronometer. The Seamaster's helium release valve comes into play once more when Bond again employs it as a detonator, inserting it into a C4 explosive he has placed beneath the diamonds in Van Birk's briefcase, which he then explodes in Colonel Moon's North Korean compound. After his release from captivity, Q furnishes 007 with a new watch fitted with a laser, which he uses to slice a hole in the ice palace when he rescues Jinx. Casino Royale 2006 Seamaster Diver 300 meter coaxial chronometer. To die in with the story of Bond becoming a double O, Bond wears two different watches. First, he sports a black Seamaster Blended Ocean 600 meter model. Then, once he has earned his double O status, he switches to the Seamaster Diver 300. Quantum of Solas 2008, Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. Here Bond sports a Seamaster Planet Ocean 600 meter coaxial chronometer with a black dial. Skyfall 2012, Seamaster Aqua Terra 150 meter. Bond again wears two different Omega Seamaster watches. First, he sports the 42 mm Planet Ocean 600 meter with a black dial and a bezel. When on his mission in Istanbul later, he dons on the Aquaterra with a blue dial. Spectre 2015, Omega Seamaster 300 Spectre Limited Edition. After wearing the Seamaster Aquaterra, Bond receives his Seamaster 300 from Q when he's told that his Aston Martin DB10 has been reassigned. It proves a vital bit of kit when 007 manages to prime the watch explosive device when cuffed to a chair and then slips it to Madeleine. Tempus fugit, he says, meaning time flies, prompting her to throw the watch towards the villain just as it explodes, allowing the heroes to escape. No Time to Die 2021 Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter 007 edition. Q modifies Bond's Seamaster Diver 300 meter on a flight to Safin's Lair, fitting a limited range electromagnetic pulse device designed to disable electronics. Bond employs the pulse first to gain entry to Safin's base and then to dispatch Primo by targeting the henchman's bionic eye. They've, they've helped us recreate and do new things with the watches over the years. They've been amazing collaborators. Look at that. It's a beautiful new That's watch. New what do you think yeah. of it? Oh, it's very special. It's got something sort of fantastic going on at the back as well, which is, uh, I don't know how they do it. 007, the 60, it's 60 years ago when they started with the Bond Adventures and Omega was celebrating this last year with this latest edition of the Seamaster Diver 300 meters. Very nice. So I love the scene from the backside and uh, you can turn it and depending on the light, how it falls on this dial, this little rotating dial, you can see here, you see him now. Look, he comes, he appears and all of you knowing how the Bond movies start, you know that he pulls out his gun, shoots, and then there's blood 
on the screens. And then the movie always starts. This is the Milanese mesh bracelet. Very nice. Wears incredibly comfortable on your wrist. I was wearing it and um, I'm not a big fan of metal bracelets. I normally always try to wear my watches with rubber tissue or a leather strap. But this mesh bracelet is good, it's comfortable, it is really hugging your wrist. You have these holes and these holes are the only possibility to adjust the length. So there is no micro length adjustment or any other feature available, but only these holes you see now on your screen. And how do you wear it? First of all, of course, you have to press the two security push pieces here, then you open up it opens up you see quite nice this branded with omega this little um, release here you open up then a pin appears and then you take the end you start to slide in the end and then you have to choose the size of depending on the size of your wrist one of the holes i take this one you close it. it's very easy there's no rocket science you just Push, it's closed and then the watch transforms into a watch that is worn with a mesh bracelet, wears comfortably, you have the Omega logo here, looks good, wears good, feels good. I didn't get a NATO strap with it because uh, this is also a watch and uh, this little engraving here on the watch and it says not for sale, so it is a watch belonging to Omega. They gave me the watch for this review to present it to you, but it is a not for sale watch and I unfortunately did not get the NATO. There is a NATO, it is not part of the watch, it's not sold with the watch, but you can choose it from the Omega website and I have a picture, there it is, and you can also wear it with a NATO and it looks cool, but yeah, it will add some thickness. This is, this is the disadvantage due to the fact that it goes twice underneath. It is adding some thickness and yeah, adds up quite to something, yeah. So I'd recommend, really I'd recommend that uh, one should wear this particular beautiful blue, it's my color blue, ah, this particular beautiful watch with the um, delivered uh, mesh bracelet uh, and not with the NATO probably, but yeah, some can, could, uh, Tastes are different, you choose, it's not me, I'm just telling you what I think. It is also good to mention that the sapphire crystal on the front side features a anti-reflective treatment only on the inner side, not on the outside. This is why we do have quite some reflections when I do turn the watch and my lights here. And uh, by turning it right now in the correct angle, you do also see how much it is domed. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, now I do have the chance that the second hand uh, will come into an area where you can see that it's causing this dome sapphire crystal causes some distortions when you are watching it from an angle like this angle for instance there are some distortions there's no other uh, way of saying it but it's it's look it's cool look here is mr lollipop swiping over the dial yeah, it's uh, 25,200 semi oscillation, 3.5 hertz. This is flat on the back side, of course. And looks good. And here again is Mr. James Bond appearing. I have to show this again. It's so nice. Here he comes. Chong! Shoots and disappears. <laughs> okay. I start to like the watch. <laughs> And you know what's also cool? Remember that the latest Bond watch belonging to the latest movie that is uh, yeah, a similar design, or I would say the same design, had lots of military markings and stuff on it. From the front side, if one buys this Omega, you don't see anything. It is a nice blue dial with the characteristic waves. The wave design, we have the typical wave design. We do have a matching blue basil, aluminium. I have to say that again, the inlay is aluminium and it looks gorgeous. You don't see anything. Only someone who knows what this is will recognize this 
as a watch that belongs to the Bond history and the Bond theme. Only then you would know there are no arrows and there are no other markings. It is a nice looking, good looking Seamaster Diver. And when you turn it around, then you can, you get all the attraction wherever you are. At the dinner, at the bar, at the bar, at the, with some friends, you get all the attraction when you do show this little disc that is linked, as I told it first, to the central second hand and turns around. What you see now is not the next sequence into the next Bond movie, but it is the box that comes with this Seamaster. And it features these legendary white dots you see on the screen when you are in the movies. How do you open the box? There's one, two, and three. And this is a push piece. Look, you can also hear it. You push, and then you open, and then you discover the Bond watch in its case. Mentioned in the box is 007, 60 years of Bond, and of course, Omega and 007. And it's a nice box, it's a nice feature, and again shows that Omega is always trying hard to, yeah, to bring something additional, some fun. Look, I love it. Here is that push piece. You press on. And when you press, you can open it. If you don't, it will not open. The case is waterproof 300 meters. I said it before. Therefore, of course, the watch features a screw down crown. I've been unscrewing it. And then you see uh, that it is a screw down crown. Here you have to push and then turn. And um, why did I do this? I just also, I wanted to show there's no date. But there are hacking seconds, so when you pull out the crown in the second position, the nicely executed central second hand with the lollipop on it will stop. You see here, it stopped. And of course, this is the proof that what I have been saying to you first, also the disc on the back side stopped. It does not turn. Why? Because it is linked to the central second hand, of course. And if I push in now, um, uh, you will see. There you go. And again, the disc begins to turn and Mr. Bond 007 special agent appears. Puff, he shoots and disappears. Is this a heavy watch? Maybe some of you asked the question already because it has this stainless steel bracelet. Not really, as you see it on your screen, 156 grams, and I would say that's okay for a full stainless steel watch. And as I told you first, it really, really wears comfortably on the wrist since this smooth, very smooth mesh bracelet literally perfectly hugs your wrist. And yeah, it's fine. The good question now is for how much is this James Bond 60th anniversary edition sold? Yes, it's easy. It's 8,900 euro, including 20% VAT. So if you want the net price, please deduct 16.666% and you get the net price in Europe, including this VAT 8,900 euro. Is this going to be a limited edition? No, it's not. It's not limited to 60 pieces, not to 600, not to 6,000, not to 60,000. It is just not limited. So in case you are probably saying, ah, oh, that's a cool watch, but in the moment I can't afford it. I don't want to buy it. I need the money for anything else, or I have to spend my money for something else. Don't worry. It is not limited and should be available for the next years. As I expect, I'm sure they are not going to manufacture too many of them, but you should be able to get one. And I want to repeat it again. It is not limited, not limited. Well, thank you very much for watching this video on Watch Advisor on YouTube, where the watches are the stars. You again did not see me. And yes, there was a superstar also appearing on the screen, Mr. Daniel Craig. 
I stay in the background as always. I'm looking forward to reading the comments. I am interested to read what you think about this edition, the 60 years anniversary edition, about the color, etc. etc. Tell me everything. Ask me questions. If I can, I will answer. And if not, I will pass the questions to Omega and Omega will answer me. So thanks for watching again. Stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube. There is much more to come very soon. Bye-bye.